This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want to welcome each and every one of you to Georgetown Presbyterian Church on this morning. Obviously, it is Father's Day. I want to say a word of special welcome to those of you who may be fathers or those who serve as father figures uh, for someone else. We uh, want to celebrate uh, your importance and the role of your family and are very thankful for you and all that you do for the members of your family. So uh, say a word to, to the fathers. Try to give them a little bit of equal time to our mothers who's, uh, who we just celebrated a few weeks back. A couple of things I just wanted to lift up uh, real quickly uh, before we begin. Those of you seated toward the center aisle, if you would begin to pass down your pew and back up again, the ritual of friendship pad. It's always good to know who has been here on a particular Sunday. And if you're a visitor, we love to get information in addition to your name, uh, some t sort of contact information, whether it be an email address or uh, a phone number, a cell phone number, or your street address, or some combination of those elements. But we're glad you're here and certainly do hope that you will feel the warm welcome of God's people on this day. Uh, a couple of things just to lift up real quickly related to the calendar. Uh, the young adults will have a special event tomorrow night at 6.30 in the youth house. Session will be meeting, meeting on Tuesday afternoon, 5.30 for our uh, monthly stated meeting. And then uh, movie and pizza night for adults at 5.30 on this Wednesday. Uh, you also, are, most of you are aware that this past week was Vacation Bible School. Wonderful week. Uh, wonderful leadership. Uh, so thanks to all of you who were a part of that, helping to lead different groups uh, of children this past week and helping to organize and make all of it happen. And thanks especially to, to Debbie for a lot of hard work behind the scenes to, to make that happen. It was a wonderful week, and so uh, hopefully you'll uh, be able to share in that through pictures and in other ways if you weren't able to be a part of that. A couple of uh, other things just uh, real quickly to lift up. There's an opportunity down at the very bottom of the announcement section on the back of your bulletin related to a way that you can support campers for Camp PD this summer up in the Bennettsville area. Uh, we are attempting to sponsor foster children, and there is information about how you can be a part of making that happen. I know, again, Johnny Weaver would love to talk to you about that. He or Jeanette, the one, if you uh, would like to have a little bit more conversation about that. But the information... Most of the information that you need is, is listed there in your bulletin. And also, just to reiterate, for those who weren't here last week, Doug Patton very briefly gave us a moment for finance in which he made the announcement that it is now possible to make gifts to uh, either Georgetown Presbyterian or to our CDC through online giving. There is a way through simply going to the website and clicking on the giving box. It'll sort of drop down, and it's fairly self-evident for most of us, maybe not for everybody, but for, for most of us, uh, it is fairly self-evident how to go about doing that. So this is just another option, just another way in which you can give to the church. It doesn't change a thing about uh, whether you, uh, the former ways that you've always given before, doesn't change a thing about that. It simply adds another option, makes available another option for those who prefer to make their gifts online. So be aware of that and check that out at some point on our website when you have an opportunity to do that if that's something that is of interest to you. Uh, Bill, are there any other things to announce? Any other things to announce on this day? Let us continue to worship the Lord together. <coughs>
Let us now call ourselves to worship. In the beginning, when God drew a circle on the face of the deep, wisdom was there rejoicing, delighting in the universe. In the beginning was the Word with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, full of grace and truth. In every time and place, God's love is poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. You are holy, O Lord, our Creator and Father, giving us mercies beyond number. You are holy, O Savior, Jesus Christ, loving and setting us free. You are holy, O Spirit of truth and peace, leading us in the ways that are righteous. O holy, eternal Trinity, we praise you forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And knowing this, let us confess our sins first together in unison and then in a moment of silent confession. Please join with me. O Lord, our sovereign, 
How majestic is your name in all the earth. Yet we put aside your majesty, seeking our own power and gain. We set aside our responsibility for the earth entrusted to our care. By both carelessness and design, we pollute air, land, and waters. In our greed, we use more resources than we rightly need. We confess that we do not fully comprehend the damage we have done to the birds of the air, the creatures of the sea, and the animals that live in forests and fields. Forgive us, we pray. Let your majesty fill our senses and pervade our actions, that we may become better stewards of creation. Call us in every infant's cry to care for one another so that all your people flourish. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, we are still standing in the grace of Christ because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. We are set free to love God and neighbor and to work for the reconciliation of the world. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. seated. And now I'd like to invite the children to come forward. y'all recovered from VBS? Did it make you tired to do VBS? Not really, it did me. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to share with our congregation what we did in VBS last week, okay? So let's start with my t-shirt. What does it say? And this is what the children and adults wore last week. And I don't like always trying to mention a special name because I'm afraid I'll forget someone because so many people help with VBS. But this was the first year we had iron-on decals. 
and the children got t-shirts and we had one volunteer uh, iron on our decals and Miss Cheryl Goss ironed on over 50 decals <laughs> and it was like whoo so I want to give you a quick overview of what we do in a day in Vacation Bible School. Our theme this year was Miraculous Mission and how Jesus saved the world. And everything was geared towards creation, how God created the earth. And we went to have story time. We went into an area that was like going outside. It was kind of like, what? But it was at night. So it had stars. And so the children heard about creation. Um, and our first day, we, we did Bible verses. But we would come in every day, we would get into our groups, we'd get into groups um, of what? What are, what are those groups called? Do y'all remember? The tribes? Sons of Israel. Israel. So the kids go into a tribe which is named after one of the um, sons of Israel. And then we would <clears throat> have an offering. This year we were trying to raise $300, right? Y'all remember what we were raising money for? We raised money for a llama. A llama. And this is how, here, Sam, you'll hold this one for me. Will you stand up? You and Emery and show them. So these are our offering tubes, and we have to fill these up with quarters, and each tube holds $60. So our goal was $300, and the boys and girls have a competition every year. This year, who won? The girls. Ah, it was a tie. <laughs> Let me tell you, I have never been so happy to hear of a tie because the girls have won for three consecutive years. <laughs> so this year, counting in front of all of the children, they each had emptied their tube twice, so they'd raised $120 a piece, and then there was $3.25 a piece in these tubes. And I was so glad the boys didn't lose by a quarter. <laughs> I mean, that was just so important. So we, okay, you sit down. So we have our offering, and we do our pledges, a pledge to the American flag, the Christian flag, and the Bible. And we have music, right? That gets them pumped up as if they aren't already. So they all get to sing, and then we divide into groups. And part of the children will go to story time, part will go to game time, craft time, and they'll have snacks, okay? So our first day... Do, do y'all remember what our Bible verse was? If I, if I said part of it, can you help me? I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So the first day, that's what the children learned, that God made us. He created everything, and he made us. And then the second day, we learned that God would keep his promises, and he promised from the beginning that he would always love us, he'd never get angry with us, and that he would send a Savior for us. And so we learned that his word was true. So y'all remember the second day? How about if we sing it? So we can learn those Bible verses when we have some music with them. <laughs> but every day they learn a Bible verse. And then our third day we learned that Jesus came and died on the cross for us. And that was a pretty familiar verse. Remember that one? John 3, 16. Y'all can... For God so loved the world. That he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John chapter 3, slash 16. See? We're, we're getting those scriptures. I'm telling you. That's awesome. And so that day we learned God always keeps his word and he sent Jesus for us. And then on our last day, what did we learn? Do y'all remember? Hmm? He's coming back. He's coming back. That Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so everything was geared towards creation. And as we went throughout the week, you know, you never know what the kids are going to do or say. But I want to tell you, on one day when we were talking about how faithful God was and he sent his son to die for us, and we were talking about he comes back and we'll one day get to live in heaven with him, one of the kids asked me, you know, Miss Debbie, if we don't believe in him, and if we don't get to go to heaven with him, where do we go? 
And that was a pretty tough question. It's not something you really want to talk about, but unless we give the whole counsel of the word, I don't think we're doing justice to the truth of the gospel. And so we talked a little bit about hell, very little, but it was important because they asked that question and I wanted them to know the truth. So we talked about that. And then the last day, I'm talking the last 10 minutes of the whole VBS, um, we had two, three, and four-year-olds this year. We had 29 of them. Um, and one of the little girls, their Bible verse, they only had to remember one thing, God made me. And one of the little girls, as she, they would come up, and I confess, I, I bribed them to learn the memory verses. Because if they did, they got a treat, right? So we had a basket, and every day they could get a treat if they could tell me their memory verse. And the very last day, one of the little three-year-old girls came up, and she said, God made me. And I said, he did. And then she said, why did he make me? And I thought, wow. So you can't answer that in two seconds, but with a three-year-old, you almost can. So I just told him how much God loved us. He created everything for us, and he just wants a relationship for us. But it just made me think, these children have questions, and we have answers through God's word. And I just don't know how much I can stress the importance of Vacation Bible School, of coming to church, of teaching your children God's word. Because even at this age, they have questions, and we need to answer those questions. And I want to thank everybody that made it possible, the congregation at large, because it's through your giving that we're able to do Vacation Bible School. And then the volunteers, we had, if you help, just stand up. I mean, we had people all over, snacks, tribe leaders, crafts, music, story time, um, kitchen. We had the youth come in. Uh, give them a hand. <laughs> And we had um, several of the youth come in and help with Vacation Bible School. It was just an incredible time. On the last day, we had a mobile planetarium from Columbia. So the children got to go into the planetarium. Was that cool? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you guys have fun? Yes, yeah. Anyway, it was awesome. Samuel was awesome in BBS. So he's one of our little ones, and he did a great. But we thank you, Georgetown Presbyterian Church. We had a wonderful time, and by the time we do it again next year, I'll be rested up. But again, thank you. And so I want to, um, every day when we would pray, um, I would pray that the seeds we planted in these children's hearts would take root and that it would grow and produce fruit for the kingdom of God. And that's my prayer again today. So would you please pray with me? Father, I just thank you once again for your Holy Spirit, for your Son, and for your love for us. Help us to remember that you haven't changed your mind about us since the creation of the world. And Father, again, I do pray for the children that attended, that they would bear fruit for your kingdom. And it's in the name of your Son, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, your word is to us a living word. We pray that on this morning we might receive that word, that you would plant within us the seeds that will take root and flourish. Help us to hear and receive the word you have for us on this morning. As we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. First reading on this morning is from the eighth psalm. Listen for the word of God. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. 
You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beast of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord will stand forever.
Our second scripture lesson this morning is taken from the Gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter. We'll begin reading with verse 11. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through a region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself before Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. And then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go your way. Your faith has made you well. I was reading a commentary this week on the gospel lesson for today by a man named David Lowes, and he reported a conversation that he had had with a colleague. It began in a kind of ordinary kind of way. How are you? He asked. But then he was surprised by the answer. The answer is, was, I am grateful. Not I'm feeling fine, um, I'm doing okay, or as they used to say up in the upper state, I'm tolerable. He, he was trying to somehow, she, she was trying to somehow communicate something that was a very profound feeling to her. The point that gratitude was not simply, simply dependent upon circumstances or such as good fortune, but it was a choice that we, we make. The gratitude is a choice in which we see blessings, in which we name them, and in which we express our gratitude in word and in deed. When we recognize blessings, we open ourselves to the realization of God's grace. And that is the message of our scriptures today. The first lesson is from Psalm 8. You can imagine David, as he wrote this psalm, reflecting on the time that he had spent in the wilderness as a shepherd, the long days and the nights when he would be outside alone with only the flock that he was tending. And he would see the majesty of creation. He would see the skies with their blue and, and feel the air and see the birds and all of the creatures that were around him. And then at night, as he would look up and see the majesty of the stars, thousands and thousands more than one could ever count. And when he saw all of that, he had this deep sense of, of awe at the majesty and the power of God. And he looked at himself and he said, with everything that God is and everything that God has done, how can God even consider us human? And yet he proclaimed, God has not only considered us, God has made us a little lower than the angels. And he's given us charge over this. He has given us dominion over everything that he has created. How wondrous and majestic is the name of the Lord. I think you can certainly say that David was overwhelmed by the majesty of creation. And he was moved to grace and gratitude. He saw this as something that was a gift that was given to him. It was not something that he had earned or something that he had produced, but it was something that was there for him to realize and appreciate and enjoy. He knew grace and he also knew gratitude. Karl Barth has reminded us that grace and gratitude belong together like heaven and earth. Grace, he said, invokes gratitude like the voice and echo. Gratitude follows grace like thunder and lightning. 
It's natural for us as we live here in the Low Country. And what a blessing and a privilege it is to live in the Low Country, even with some of the no -seums and the mayflies. It is a joyous and beautiful and magnificent place to live. We're surrounded every day by, by beauty and, and by such an extraordinary sense of the presence and the power and the creativity of God. And when we see this, we do feel graced. We feel that somehow God has blessed us in, in, in really wonderful ways with this magnificent creation. But we're also reminded from the psalmist and for the many things that we see in scripture that while God has created all of this and given us dominion over it, dominion does not mean to trample on it. Dominion is a word that means that we have a sense of stewardship. A stewardship of all the beauty that is around us and all that is a part of that beauty. Stewardship is not something as political. It is not dependent, dependent upon our opinion on global warning. It simply means that God has called us to take care of the world that we live in, to enjoy it and to enjoy the resources and to make sure that there's something left for those who follow us. Grace is the appreciation of what we have. Gratitude is a commitment to make sure that it stays as it is, or that we even enhance it and add to its majesty. Second scripture reading this morning was taking place when Jesus was making a journey between Samaria and Galilee. And he came to a small village, and it's like many of the small villages that exist. It existed in that time outside the city gates. And there were a group of lepers. Leprosy was a very dreaded disease. It was a disease that was, was very debilitating to the body, but it also was a disease that had very strong spiritual and religious connotations because people with leprosy were considered unclean. And as being unclean, they could not associate with anybody else because anyone else who came in contact with them would become unclean themselves. And so they were banished. They had to stay together. They had to call out to somebody when they came near. And they had to stay outside, a kind of an accumulation of people to themselves. And that was what Jesus came upon. And he looked at these people and he had compassion on them. And they cried out, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. And he had mercy on them. But he didn't really heal them right there on the spot. He told them to go and see the village priest. And the purpose of that was that if they were healed, they could not be declared healed or return to society until the priest in the village said that they were clean and that they were no longer to, able to contaminate other people, that they could rejoin and be a part of what was there. They could only to return to society when the priest cleared them. And so they went their way. And as they went, they were healed. And they were marveling certainly of, of what had happened to them, but one of them, when he realized that he was being healed, he turned back and he came to Jesus and he fell down and prostrated himself before Jesus and he thanked him and he praised him and he blessed him for all that he had done. He experienced a sense of grace. He realized that he didn't, hadn't done anything to deserve the healing that came to him by Jesus. It was something that was a gift, a blessing. And he was overwhelmed with gratitude at, the, at that grace that had become a part of his life. Jesus asked, weren't there 10 
that were healed. And it wasn't so much that he was going to take away the grace that he had given because gr Jesus' grace is unconditional. He was not, he healed them because he was a person of mercy and because he cared and because he loved. It was not something that he was going to take away because of their ingratitude. But he realized that in their failure to come back, and, we, and Luke doesn't tell us why they didn't come back. Maybe it was because they were so excited that they were going to be able to rejoin society that they just kept on going and didn't give it a thought. Maybe it was because they wanted the reunion with their families that they had been away for so long. Whatever, they did not come back. But the one that did, Jesus said that his faith had made him whole. It is in the recognition of grace and in the expression of gratitude and the combination of the two together that we find wholeness. Wholeness that touches the very depths of our being. It is very easy to become absorbed in the enjoyment of the graces that we know, whether it be family and friends, whether it be the beauty of our environment, whether it be the good things that happen to us in our days, it is very easy to kind of forget about the grace part. It may be that we just get busy and forget. It may be that somehow we feel like that we had this coming to us, that God, does, oh, that God owes us something, that God, because of things we've done, that God should be blessing us, that we deserve God's blessing. Or well, it could be, hopefully not, that we simply think that the blessings we have and the life we possess is something that has come about because of our own ingenuity and our hard work and our, hard, and our smarts, and it's not had nothing to do with someone else. The reality is that none of us have gotten where we are on our own. We may worked hard, we may have great educations, but none of us have gotten where we are on our own. We have been graced by God, and we've been graced by others. Many of us were moved by an event that happened a few weeks ago at the graduation exercises at Morehouse College in Atlanta. The graduation speaker, Robert Smith, concluded his address with a promise that he would pay off the college debt of every student that was there in that graduating class. The total debt. Estimated at $40 million. The stunned and jubilant students' reaction was well recorded. But what may not have been as well recorded was another gift that Robert Smith gave to those graduates. In his address, which was entitled, Bus Number 13, he spoke to them about some other things. He told them of his growing up as an African-American child in a segregated Denver community. He talked about the difference between the white schools and the black schools, and it's the significance of the difference. The poor facilities, the underfunded schools, the outdated and used school books, and how it was limiting the future of a lot of people. And then he said a group of Denver citizens decided that they wanted to do something about that. And so they set up this program where they would take some students from the black community and bus them to some better schools in the white communities. There was a lot of negative reaction to that. In fact, thir one third of Denver school buses were burned in response to that action. But he said in spite of the violence, Every morning, his parents marched him out 
and put him on bus number 13. For five years, he rode bus number 13 every day to school. And he said that experience totally changed his life. It gave him the foundation and the tools and the equipment that he needed to be the person that he could become. And he became one of the most successful business people in America. But he does not attribute that to the fact that he worked harder than anybody else or that he tried more diligently. He said that his success was because of community. He declared that he was not self-made, that he was community-made. He told the students this, more than the money we make, the awards or recognitions or titles we earn, each of us will be measured by how much we contribute to the success of people around us. We cannot be community made unless we are making community. When we experience grace, we feel the need to bring grace to others. Grace produces gratitude. Gratitude manifests itself in action doing something good for someone else. That's the way the scriptures teach us to live. That's the way God has called us to act. It is important that we focus on grace, that we think about grace, that we develop our grace, that we appreciate our sense of grace, and that we choose to live in gratitude to the grace that is ours that we be able to answer as the question in the beginning was, how are you? I'm grateful. And so doing, and so feeling and becoming truly grateful, truly appreciative of the grace that we enjoy, we find wholeness for ourselves, and we build a better world. We care for the universe. We care for each other. We make a difference. Thanks be to God. Amen.
words of the Apostles' Creed, may we say what we believe, the, the words are printed in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Mary's Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us again pray together. <clears throat> Holy and loving God, we gather before you this morning on this Father's Day. We know that we are truly blessed to be able to call you our Father. You have created us in your image. You have sustained us in your mercy. You have forgiven our rebellion and granted us forgiveness and reconciliation through the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. You have made us your people, filled us with your Holy Spirit, and poured out your grace upon us. We are indeed blessed to know you as our Father. We pray that this day and every day that our, our lives will honor you. God, we ask your blessings today on fathers and those who are father figures. Give us wisdom and compassion and love that is sufficient to the task and opportunities that you've given to us. We thank you for our own fathers who we name now in our hearts, for their guiding hands that help shape us and, who, and shape who we are, and who endowed us with love and many good things. We pray also, God, for one another. We do this not because you commanded it, but because we love one another, and we share our mutual burdens. We pray for those who are sick and those who are lonely. We pray for those who are afraid and those who grieve, for those who are awaiting surgery and those who are recovering from surgery, for those who have diagnoses that are uncertain and create anxiety. We pray, O oh God, for all who struggle, for all who struggle with personal problems and personal decisions. We not only pray for another God, we pray that you will show us how we can support and encourage and comfort and build each other up. Grant us, we pray, O oh Lord, the power to bless. And God, we pray for our world, our country, our community, our leaders. Give them the selfless dedication and wisdom that will enrich the lives of all humankind. We pray our prayer in the name of Jesus and as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are blessed. We are richly blessed. And one of the ways in which we show God our blessing is by the commitment of our lives and by the use of the resources that he has given to us. So remembering the blessings that are ours, let us bring our gifts to God.
Let's pray. Oh Lord, we pray that the gifts we bring and the lives we continuously live before you will praise you and will bless others. Amen.